So this marks the final chapter of the modeling segment. Beyond this, we'll start seeing our character in colors and shaders. To wrap up this milestone, we will be adding a few additional details to the character. We'll start with the backpack and then move on to the extras like a muffler, glasses, badges, pockets, straps, tags, buttons, bands, all those tiny tiny details. So while each detail on its own might not seem like much, but when combined with the main model, it takes the character to a different level. These additions not only enhance the model, but also will add a lot to the secondary animations later on. The back will sway, tags will flow along with it, making your character feel more lively and detailed. So feel free to think of your own set of secondary objects to personalize your creation. So welcome back everyone, this is Ram from Crossmind Studio and you are watching chapter number 7 of the animated character creation series. For bonus chapters, project files and other useful resources, check out the premium version. Details, hotkeys, PDF and more are in the description. Let's dive right in. So let's try and add some more details. I'll just add one mesh circle and scale it down, put it here. In the edit mode, I'm just going to select some of these and move these down. With everything selected, just extrude it and uh, just wrap it around the neck like this. Recalculate normals outside, flip normals. If we select everything, extrude along normals. This way we can add some depth to this fabric. Maybe I need to scale this entire thing down a little and slightly taller. With everything selected, I'm just going to duplicate this whole thing and create one separate layer of this. Once we have this, we can enable connected only and start tweaking the shape. So the bottom part is going to rest on the shoulders a little. Just trying to uh, first get the overall volume. It might be too big, but let's see. Just trying to add a few layers. Maybe it's resting on the shoulder and then uh, some of this is stacking up. So keep adding a few loops and adjust it. Just trying to make this appear softer, randomize the form a little. Just trying to break the cylindrical form, so ring form. And uh, maybe if we can achieve few folds, that'll be really great. All right, so I think we are pretty much done with the, with this as well. Only thing I would like to add here is just create a duplicate of these edges, extrude some part of it, or just a piece of cloth hanging down like this. I'm using proportionate editing to make softer modifications. Select the entire thing and make one overall extrusion to add a depth to this fabric. You can also use solidify modifier if you want later on. Just select a few loops and push it in and out to create sort of a fabric-like formation. Keep checking rest of the views and try to just shape it according to the body. It's like resting on the chest part. Let's see how it looks in the render. Yeah, so rest everything looks good. So let's make one uh, bag behind this character. Now for the backpack, I'm going to make one simple cube and divide this with a loop tool. Get rid of half of this and apply mirror modifier. I'm going to scale this entire thing. Enable the clipping. First I'm going to just make overall volume, proportions and volume and then add a few loop cuts. So just keep adding segments to form the different sections of the bag. First, I think, uh, yeah, the overall volume is fine. It apply subdivision surface modifier. Now what I'm thinking is to create one inset here and then extrude it again like this. 
here we can bevel this edge to create a hard surface a separation line basically it's a simple object simple shape and it's just extruding and adding loops let's go to the perspective view so that we can see how much of area it's covering now these faces i'm thinking of extruding it this way scale it down let's create one bevel on these edges and we can get rid of this top face something like this we can use this edge to create a flap like this a pretty simple bag nothing complicated going on here all right now for the base i'm thinking to add one loop here to have sort of a hard edge usually there are stronger and harder angles at the bottom of the bags where it sits on the floor and in between let's add one loop cut so that we can round this off like this we can also add one partition here just to make it appear like it. there's a different uh, section here so create a bevel and alt e to extrude it inside to create the separation and these faces we can extrude like this shade smooth let's add one more pocket in the front e for extrude I'm going to insert this and extrude it inwards like this same thing i'll do here uh, let's extrude this part select these two create one inset extrude it inside scale this down a bit and then these top faces we can extrude again so you have these pockets now we can uh, we can duplicate this edge and extrude it sideways and in the side view just try to create this uh, sort of uh, the main flap which covers the bag so simply extrude it a few times and that should do the job linked faces by pressing l and uh, extrude this entire part to add depth to this fabric and make it appear thick so for this flap right here i have some uh, face hiding right here so i just need to bring it down for this these corners to smooth out so keep checking it without the subdivision surface in between now for the bands create one simple duplicate of this edge same thing it's pretty much same thing we have been doing this entire tutorial just trying to make use of whatever geometry we have and uh, quickly extract the best starting geometry and uh, make use of it because it takes time to add a new object and then orient it according to your object so extracting an existing face is much easier this has to go somewhere so for that let's duplicate any of these edges and put it right here then in the profile view just keep extruding it and uh, try to make these ends meet this is where both the straps will be buckled up shade smooth and we can select this with l and extrude along normal to create a thick surface and uh, then we can select the edge this one right here and try to connect it with this one there is no particular design i am following for this bag it's just the very basic generic shape the essential things which uh, i can remember from my memory about the bag now with the proportionate editing i'm going to just wrap this around our character so that it looks like it's uh, actually resting on the shoulders and uh, passing through the underarms All right, so more or less this is done i'm going to add one more edge in between so that we can fold this part a little all right now we can select this entire thing extrude along normals to make it round surface let's add few more edge loops on the sides and select these loops with alt extrude along normal and move it inside maybe so just a simple separation line so there could be stitches or something around these later on in the texturing stage we can add so small small things adding up and the back looks fine overall
Now for this part, we might would need a flap. So for that, we can uh, extract these two edges and uh, then extrude it out. We can select this entire thing with L and flip the normals from search menu, shade smooth. If you want, you can keep it connected to the main bag. Now let's select these outer edges of, uh, of the pocket. Control B to bevel this. So just going to connect this right here and uh, add one more edge loop. Then extrude this whole thing along normals to sort of solidify it. If you want, you can create one flap here, but uh, for now, I think this is good enough. Now I'm just going to create one uh, simple cube here or just extract the existing face. And uh, this is for the button. So just going to align this right here and maybe we can uh, subdivide this. Select these corners, scale it down, create one inset uh, individual, inset individual, and then scale this down. You can delete these faces and then extrude this whole thing to create the button. I'm going to keep the scale large for this button to sort of keep it in line with the rest of the style of character. So this looks fine. We can put one button here, even though, yeah, let's place it right here. And later on, once we apply mirror modifier, we can merge it down. And here, just to add a bit more, I'm going to create a duplicate of this, sort of a side hook. Just simply extract the existing edges and uh, yeah. Again, extract the side edge to make a strap for the sides and extend it if you need to. And then we can solidify it by pressing Alt E and extrude. So now it looks complete. Now here I can uh, maybe if I create a few few points like this, then we can use this to create sort of a, a plastic band for a tag. Recalculate outside, extrude along normals. Let's put this right here. This is where we can hang the tags. Now here I can add one grid plane or maybe I can just extract one of these planes. I'm just going to subdivide this a few times like this and maybe stretch it up. We can create one inset, disable the individual, and uh, we can also enable boundary and then delete this guy. Let's select everything, extrude a little, and align this to this little rubber band. Make a few duplicates. So all of these, when animated together, are going to add so much in the secondary animation. Then I'm going to add a simple circular shape to make badges which are going to rest on the shoulders or maybe it's the strap of the bag. So just a simple thing. If, if you have any other ideas, just feel free to do so. I'm going to apply the mirror modifier. Uh, before we proceed to the materials, prepare a few things like uh, we don't have eyebrows for the character. Right here with this character selected, I'm going to select these faces press shift D and then separate this selection. Now I'm going to apply one mirror modifier on this. And we can also solidify this thing. Just shape this properly. Later on, we are going to create some particle hair on these eyebrows. If you want you can use shrink wrap so that it stays on top of character all the time but uh, let's see we we might won't need it it's pretty simple geometry and uh, there are very few points we can do without it actually so what i'm thinking is duplicate these uh, faces what if I make a slightly 
thinner strand here. Let me just reduce the thickness 0 0.01. So just a simple additional shape to break that uh, chunky little form that we have for eyebrow at this moment. So eyebrows are done for now. Next thing I'm going to do is uh, maybe eyelashes. Let's select some of these uh, edge loops around the eyes. Maybe the ones which are inside a little. So we can start from uh, a bit of depth. Yeah. Separate this selection. We are going to create one extrude without the proportionate editing enabled. We can just scale it up like this. So this could be eyelashes or stylized of it. Lip normal. If you see darker faces, and try to taper it from the sides. So depending on the kind of character you're making, if it's a girl, then try to keep it slightly broader. But if it's a boy, then you can have something finer, maybe. We can use mirror modifier for this as well. Eyelashes are way too big. So I'm just going to scale it down. Let's first get rid of this center edge, dissolve edge here. We can rework on this a little. Just make sure it's sticking to the eyes and uh, there is no gap in between. Try avoiding gap as much as possible. Shade smooth this and uh, let's see. So we have override material that we had made previously for the preview. Yeah, so this seems fine. And uh, what I'll do is once I apply material on eyelashes and everything, I'll see if this looks way too big. And uh, we can always reduce a uh, few things about it. For the face, I need to do a few more things. Inside of the character, if you go to the perspective view, just need to create something for the mouth. So that when character opens its mouth, we'll see something inside instead of hollow or blocked surface. So just extrude the loops from the lips to inside a little. So something is not right here. It seems like we should delete some of these faces to have proper loops. Delete faces again or delete these edges. Let's go to the side view. I'm just going to start fresh and extrude these a few times and keep spreading this out because we are going to add some teeth and gums as well inside this yeah that's about it and for the inside of the mouth i'm going to create one plane let's shrink it down like this in edit mode i'm going to add one loop here and bevel these edges let's apply subdivision surface and see what's going on I'm going to subdivide this plane, extrude everything, and uh, this these could be teeth. Create few loops here and here. Really simplified form of teeth. I'm going to add one loop here, and uh, maybe disorient these a little to make it look uh, organic. And then I'll make a duplicate of this entire thing. If you want, you can select both of these and uh, make it round like this. This can go inside this mouth. Scale it down right here. Let's create one uh, shape key for character. Just going to expand this selection and uh, just work with the proportionate editing and try to open this mouth with connected only enabled in proportionate editing. So here I'm going to use 3D cursor, place it right here, select some of these faces, maybe these faces and uh, try to open mouth. So this is just a rough job I'm doing here. So just the position of the, just for the position of the mouth, I'm going to do a pretty rough job here. So give it some time and uh, 
just carefully place these dentures inside the mouth. So seems like I might have made a mistake. A few of these edges are flipped upside down. So I'm just going to scale these in a negative direction. That's probably the reason it's not opening up properly. I'm just going to do inverse scaling to flip it upside down and uh, this should work. Yeah, so this looks much better. And uh, I think uh, I might have uh, extruded uh, the inside of the mouth in inward direction. So that's what I was trying to fix. So pretty much done. And uh, let's see if uh, we need uh, anything else. Now right here, I can uh, create one simple box for tongue. Apply subdivision surface and uh, just one more loop here so that we can uh, shape it like this and this tongue should be visible right here so all of this is going to look much better with the uh, materials so at this moment don't worry about it too much just make sure the scale is right it doesn't look too broad and once you're done just turn off the shape key that you have all right, so seems like our modeling is done. Character is complete. I'm just looking around to see if there are any improvements I can see. I'm just uh, realizing that I haven't really made a seam line for uh, for the jacket. So I'm just quickly going to grab these uh, loops by alt clicking on these and uh, we can actually give it a bit of bevel and then alt E to extrude along normals and then push these inside a little and then i really feel actually there should be a pocket somewhere here so i'm just going to manually se select these faces extrude along normals and at the top this should be the opening i'm just going to push these out a little more to make more room for it and then uh, maybe round this up a little you can control select to define a range of selection and then i can insert this a little by pressing I, insert one more time, and then extrude it inside. For the flap, I'm going to select probably this line right here and extrude it like this. And uh, yeah, carefully just push this down a little like this. All right. just in case if you're planning to put a button here and here as well we can create a simple extrusion a little bit not too much and then extrude this part inside a little just an impression of pocket i'll make one on the other side as well it's not exactly a symmetrical object so i can't really use a mirror modifier on this because uh, some of the parts are asymmetrical now let's look at the shoes so yeah, I wasn't quite happy with the knot that I had made here. So I'm just going to fix it a little. Just going to press L and select this entire segment. Uh, everything seems fine. It's just that uh, the knot is not really clear. So what if we tidy these a little more? Yeah, I'm just going to make one more duplicate of these laces right here. And maybe I can add a few more rings right at the center of this knot so where the knot is tied or maybe a torus knot or something let's see so I'm just going to finish this shoelace first this is where we are going to rest this main knot and just twist this in a few different uh, directions so that from all the views we can see the knot Yeah, this seems fine. And then uh, right here, I'm going to create one curve circle. And then put it right here, Alt S, adjust the radius, place it in the middle of the knot. And make a duplicate of this again. That's it, pretty much done. This right here can be deleted and uh, we can use this tangent instead. Uh, 
and for the hand bands i'm going to select few of these loops and uh, separate out these uh, selections we can solidify this and maybe make a few more duplicates and uh, randomly arrange these just a slight tilt here and there and uh, this should look random yeah this looks fine seems like uh, the body had a shape key uh, we were actually working in the shape key so don't worry uh, you can always go back to the the object mode and apply the shape key so whatever you extract from the body uh, it will have the same modifiers and shape keys so just going to create a simple grid pane here and uh, we can add one more loop in this and then you can select both of these and create one insert for uh, individual faces add a few more loops and then make a quick selection and delete few of these to make the buckle for the straps these might not be the accurate models but uh, it's just good to have something which connects and uh, it doesn't look incomplete i hope we are not overdoing it we haven't added much so far it looks uh, good on the character so in the straps just make a few loops and uh, wrap it around the buckle so almost done with it just a little bit more tighter and uh, now for the bands i think we can add a few more loops also tighten up the pockets just push these out a little and yeah this looks like this some volume in the pockets i'm just going to add one circle here to make the glasses and these are curved circles the shape all four points to make the frame the main glass shape and then we are going to apply a mirror modifier on this so yeah pretty standard shape for the glass and uh, let's put it on the both sides and push it back and align it to the character yeah a slight tilt so that it rests on the nose and then make a simple plane and this we can extrude to the end of the ears to make the frame of the glasses pretty simple object similar to what we had made in the beginners introduction series and extrude this overall thing to make it solid and maybe extend the corner a bit and push it inside the glass part so that it looks like it's holding it it's, it's not accurate but uh, it's just enough i guess then i'm going to create a few points in the middle with control clicks and uh, with this we can create the nose bridge uh, i'm not quite sure what to call it simple extrusion and uh, create the center of the frame and one extrude here and let's connect both of these yeah so i have mirror modifier and uh, yeah let's try and connect both of these maybe slightly more rounder and slightly more arched shape I'm going to extrude one of the back face which is going to connect with the rest of the bridge which is resting on the nose this one yeah I think this should be enough and uh, then let's uh, work on the main glasses I'm going to convert it to mesh so that we can grid fill it we'll have to grid fill both sides manually and then select few of these center faces and with proportionate editing push it out a little to have that round look then shade smooth it and uh, yeah solidify it a little and in the object data properties i'm going to enable the auto smooth and set it to 30 degrees so that way not everything is smoothed out only the front faces so i'm going a bit fast forward in this section because uh, we have been doing the same thing for the past two videos so i'm more i'm confident that uh, 
you understand what he, what we are doing and i don't want to just uh, spend too much time on each of these small things and that way otherwise the video is going to be for five or six hours or something so for these small things i trust you will be able to get through these without me having to instruct you for each and every small step so we have been using the basic command so now i'm just going to finish this up uh, wherever it's possible to add some improvements add some loop loop cards or something so i'll do that and I'll just finish it off in the outliner i'm just going to rename everything and give it a proper name and make a collection with the name of character and underneath that i'm just going to put a few categories maybe one for the props one for the hair uh, just make a few collections and arrange it nicely simply drag and drop it to the other collections this wraps up our main 3d modeling milestone congratulations but remember practice will only make you better so don't let this knowledge fade away put it to good use and in the next few videos we will be adding 3d shaders to all these models and paint a few textures for skin and props it might not be the most detailed work but it should be just enough for our character's style i can assure you you are going to enjoy the shading process after putting in so much hard work in making this model it deserves some colors and shaders and it deserves to be animated so let's take it forward and not stop here the next chapter is going to be editing uv of the character so we can shade and texture it later jump to discord server if you'd like to discuss anything related to this on channel dedicated to this series check pinned comment for frequently asked questions and problems check description for pdf of keyboard shortcuts discount coupons and other mentioned resources for this tutorial if you enjoyed this chapter do check out the full playlist and hope you continue all the way till the end also consider buying the premium version and unlock the additional chapters and project files and bonus content which will take you through the process of rigging with rigify creating a nice walk cycle animation creating secondary animations using plot physics and bone constraints and rendering your entire project using cycles render engine share your work with me on instagram tag me with instacross mind and participate in discussion on discord channel for this course links are in the description please give it a like and subscribe and stay tuned for more share your thoughts in the comment section and don't forget to share it with your colleagues and on social media to help us reach the wider audience thank you for all your support and love let's jump to the next video